If you're new to DaVinci and a beginner video editor, I'm going to be showing you an easy way to go from point A to point B when starting a project in DaVinci Resolve and ending up with exporting the video so that you can upload it to YouTube. When you first launch DaVinci, you're going to see this. This is called your Media tab. And these are the little tabs that are down here. Each one has its own name. And honestly, the, there's only two that you're going to be messing with, especially if you're just starting out. The Edit tab, this is where you're going to be editing everything. And then the Deliver tab, and this is where you're going to export. So the first thing when you start a new project, you're going to go to this gear, and this is your project settings. So within here, you have your timeline format. This is the size of your video. So typical high def is going to be 1920 by 1080. And then of course you have 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD. With your timeline frame rate, this is going to differ depending on the camera that you're using. So if you're using a phone, it's most likely going to be in 30 or 60 frames per second. So you can change that by just clicking this. If you don't know the frame rate of your video, there's an easy way to find that out. You drag in your video into your media pool. And if you don't see the media pool, it's this tab right up here. Turn it on and off. And here it is in a small format. You can also hit this button here to take up the full space. And if you don't see it as a line item like this, you can click this grid and you're able to view it as a thumbnail. We'll go back here and if you scroll over, I'm also clicking middle mouse wheel on my mouse, clicking and dragging so that I can move back and forth. Right here, FPS, that's your frames per second. This one was shot at 24. The reason why you wanna know that is if you put it in a video and it's at a different frame rate than the timeline, then it can look a little weird, a little bit choppy and just not feel right. So that's one thing that you wanna make sure that you have down. That about does it for the project settings. I do have another video that'll be linked in the description going over details of the settings that I use whenever I'm editing videos in DaVinci. Within the media pool is where you keep your videos, your sound effects, your voiceover, your music, images, and you can keep it organized, which is something I highly recommend you do. And it's as simple as right clicking within here and selecting new bin. That's what they call folders is bins. And then you can name it something like footage and you can drag your footage into there and now you can see where your videos are and know where everything's at. Now that you know where your footage will be, we're going to create a timeline. So the timeline is if you're coming from iMovie, it's like your movie project. So we're going to right click timelines, create new timelines. You can also hit control or command N on a computer. And from right here, we can name it. Just name it video. And then I have it checked for use project settings. The settings that we did at the beginning will be carried over into this timeline. If you want to make new ones, you can always uncheck it and do your own settings within that particular timeline. So create. And the great thing about having multiple timelines is, or the ability to have multiple timelines, is that you can collect all of your footage for maybe a series of videos and have multiple timelines so that you can have each individual video but be able to pull footage from previous videos and it just makes it a lot easier if you're working with multiple video projects within one project in DaVinci. Now that we have our timeline created, we can drag our footage in. I'm gonna show you how you can navigate around the timeline. So one thing you can do to zoom in and out is there's this little negative and positive over here that you can adjust or you just click anywhere. And you also have three pre-made zoom settings. So you have this where it just shows the extent of the zoom. So if you have multiple videos, it'll just go to that full, as much as it can zoom in over there. Detailed zoom, it'll go right down as close as possible so you can see each individual frame. And then you have a custom zoom, which just this is something that you can customize. But one thing that I like to do is use Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and scroll with your mouse at the same time so you can zoom in and out on the timeline. If you're doing this and it's only zooming in where the playhead is, which is this red line, and it won't zoom in where your mouse is, there's an easy way to fix that. 
go up to view and zoom around mouse pointer and click that. Then you can be able to zoom wherever you want. And it comes in handy a lot, especially when you have lots of video files you're going through. If you have a mouse that has a actual physical wheel, which I highly suggest getting if you're gonna be video editing a lot, it comes in handy. I've worked with the Magic Mouse on Mac computers and this is just a lifesaver. You can click and drag and you can scrub back and forth throughout the timeline. Another thing, if you want to see a more detailed view of your video, like how it has these little thumbnails at the bottom, you can hover over here and you'll see this arrow pop up and you can just drag it. And the same can be said for the audio tab. So you can get a really good view, especially if you're on a smaller monitor or you just have bad eyes, this comes in handy. If you can't see this view, come up over here and click this little square area and you have video view options. So this is just has nothing. This has just the little first thumbnail, the beginning of it. And then this one has a picture along the entire length of the video, which is what I personally like to use. Uh, with the audio, I actually like to turn this off to where I can see it all at the bottom. To me, it's just more visually easier to see where the highs and lows are of the audio. And you can also adjust the track height for video and audio separately here. Now we know how to navigate around the timeline. I'm gonna show you how to actually start editing, which is the exciting part, fun part. The first thing to edit, and pretty much the most important thing you need to know how to do is to cut. So there's two ways you can do this. You can cut where the playhead is, which like I said before, is this red line. So maybe you've been watching it and then right about here you wanna make a cut. Select the footage and hit Control or Command B. And there, now you have a cut. Alternatively, you can just hit B on the keyboard to bring up Blade, or you can click it right up here. You'll see it highlight red. And now you can move wherever you want and make a cut. To get back to your cursor, you can click up here, or you can also hit A on the keyboard. And now you can click and drag and move your videos all around. And one thing that I really like about DaVinci if you want to adjust where you had cut, you can do that by selecting right in the middle where that cut line is, click and hold and just drag it back and forth. And now you can reposition where that cut was made in case you've messed up or maybe you just need to adjust a little bit. If you've been editing and moving clips around and you have all these gaps, there's an easy way you can get rid of that. If you click in the empty spot, like say right here, and it highlights gray, hit delete on the keyboard and it'll ripple delete, which means it just brings all the footage back. Now, if you saw that, it also did it to the bottom clips. So an easy way around that, you can lock the video and audio track. Now you can click delete, bring it forward and you don't have to worry about that. Or for instance, you have a bunch of clips out and you have multiple gaps. You don't wanna keep clicking each one individually. There is another thing you can do. Just go up to edit and click delete gaps, boom. Puts everything back together so that you don't have any more gaps and you can go along editing a lot smoother. Adjusting audio, this is a big one. So there's a couple ways you can do this. For one, you can select the video and if you have your mouse over this line on the audio, you can click and drag it down to mute it or click it up higher to make it louder. You can also animate or make certain points of the audio louder or quieter. You can accomplish this by holding down Alt or Option and clicking on the parts that you want to adjust and they're gonna create these little dots. Now you can drag it up and down and adjust your audio to what sounds best for your video. You can also go up here to the Inspector tab. If you don't see that, click Inspector. You can also drop it down so you can see all of your settings for your clip. Go up to audio, now you have volume. If you do adjust your volume here, it will automatically make one of those dots. So do keep that in mind if you're going to be animating it and want to be more pinpoint precise on it, you can use this feature. I'm going to hit this redo button to reset all the audio settings. While we're here in the Spectre tab, I'm gonna show you how you can adjust your video. Go up to video 
And now you have a zoom, so you can zoom in and out. You also have position, so you can move it left, right, up and down. But say you wanna just move it on your own with your mouse. You can do that by clicking this little box down here. Click that, now it's highlighted and you can move it around. You can grab these little points and resize it. You also have options to uh, adjust your pitch and your yawn, which is just kind of like rotating around this little area that's called the anchor point, which you can move by adjusting the anchor point right there. You can also flip your video upside down, or left and right. You can crop the video just by using the cropping feature. Uh, there's also these little diamonds, which are to animate. So you can animate the cropping if you want. So maybe you're trying to reveal the image, you can have it just closed here. You select it there, move along to where you want it to uh, be finished, and then you just drag it back. And now you can play it and it animates the reveal. I did it a little bit slower, but there it is. I'm gonna reset that. Dynamic zoom, this one's a great feature that's similar to Ken Burns that you would find in iMovie. You just tick that on and you can select whether it's zoomed at an easy ease, which is just slow and smooth, or just regular linear, which one point to another. I usually go with doing an ease in and ease out just because it looks a lot smoother. Uh, you can also swap it so that it goes in a different direction. Here's a little example of that. Then you can swap it and go the opposite direction. If you need to separate the audio from the video, maybe you're making some B-roll and you don't want the audio from the B-roll to be interfering with your dialogue, you can do that simply just by selecting Alt and then clicking the video. Now you can bring the video up, you can move it around, or you can just hold down Alt, click the audio and delete that. Now you don't have any audio anymore and you can move the video wherever you want and just have some B-roll. Alternatively, if you just wanna hide a video or you wanna mute the audio entirely and not delete it, you can do that by also clicking Alt and selecting and hitting D on the keyboard to disable the clip. So now it's gone. You can do the same with audio, hold down Alt, click the audio, D, and now it's muted. So you won't hear it or you won't see it. And if you ever wanna go back and turn it on, then you can do that real simply just by hitting D again. I'm gonna briefly go over effects just because there's so many in DaVinci, but if you want some transitions or titles, DaVinci already comes with a lot. So to get to those, just hit effects up here. And within this toolbox, you have titles, generators, effects, video transitions, audio transitions. Let's show you an example. I can just uh, grab a video transition, click, drag it, and I'll just put it right in between this clip. And now, boom, a <laughs> transition. And you can make it longer or shorter by just grabbing it and stretching it just like that. Same with audio transitions, which the only thing I ever really use is just this crossfade. Titles, you have all sorts of titles. If you hover over them and slide left to right with your mouse, you can see previews of what they're gonna look like. If you want one, just click, drag, and put it over the footage that you wanna see it on. You can select it, change your text here, And you can also change the color, super simple. Your sizing, your font, you can do it all right within here. Generators, they're pretty much just like different backgrounds or solid colors or things you can grab. They come in handy in certain instances, but I personally don't really use them very much. And that's the basis of editing within DaVinci. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually export that video. Before you export, you need to select your in and out points. What this is going to do is to show what part of the timeline you actually want exported. So if you have maybe part of the video over here and you're not gonna export this part, you're saving this for something else or you're just leaving it there and you're not exporting it, you can go all the way to where you want your video to start, click I on your keyboard for in, and then go to the end where you want the video to end and click O on the keyboard for out 
and now it will render just within those in and out points. Go down to this rocket ship, the deliver page, select the render settings. One great thing with DaVinci is if you're a YouTuber, they already have pre-made YouTube settings. Even better, you can click it and select the quality that you want. You can also just click it and change it within here. You also have the option to upload directly to YouTube. There's a couple other features they have that I'm not gonna go into in this video, but I'll have a future one. So I'm just gonna use YouTube as an example. They have all these other formats that you can export in. And we can change our file name here. Video. Location, I'm gonna browse. I always like to have a folder structure where I know exactly where the exported videos are going so I can always go back to them later. If you wanna know how I structure my files and folders, I have a video linked in the description about that. I'll just go over to where I have my exports, final, click save. Now the video is going there. I hit add to render queue and then render all and that will start the render process. So that's how to edit within DaVinci Resolve for beginners. If I didn't cover something that you wanna know, let me know and I will make a video about it. And for more in-depth videos over DaVinci, I have those coming and I will cover a lot more features in depth in the future.